Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura, and today we're going to take a look at one of those questions that always comes up to Rotarians. What's Rotary? And we have with us an expert today, uh, Michael Boyer. Michael Boyer is in charge of public image for Rotary. Michael, welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, okay. Um, I was born and raised in Alaska, um, Wasilla, Alaska. And I made it down here right after college. I went to the University of Oregon and came down to this area after I met my wife. Um, joined Rotary about 15 years ago, and I'm a fourth generation Rotarian. Fourth so, generation. Yeah, so we've, uh, we have some Rotarians in our family. <laughs> a little bit of heritage there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> now, um, wasn't your father was a, a governor actually in the uh, Alaska area? Yeah, my father was governor um, of 5010 the Yukon Territory all the way into Russia. Wow. So he, he spanned a big, uh, very large territory. Now, how much time did you actually spend seeing what he did as a, as a governor? I, I, went to one of his, I, I went to one of his district conferences, but I was, okay. th this was just a few years ago. Okay. So um, I went up to also for his demotion. Okay. But oh, nice. yeah, so those are the, 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 really the experience that I had with him, but we talked a lot about it because, you know, he, he always talks to me about being district governor, so I, I get to listen to that. Wait, so. What year was that? Do you remember offhand? Yeah, that was 11 and 12. 11, 12. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, it sounds like it's still in the family. I know your wife is, is in Rotary also. For sure she is. <laughs> she was a charter member of the Grover Beach Club in Grover okay. Beach. Okay, good. good. Yeah. Uh, as far as Rotary, your experience in this, how is it that you ended up being in public image, working for Rotary. Was that something from education, something you just had a passion for? Well, I think it really comes down to my vocation. I've been working in marketing for about 20 years, and it was, a, it was the place where I, I felt that I could contribute the most. And so that's, where, that's why I really focused on it. Um, first working in social media at the district level and then moving into um, being an assistant public image coordinator and now a, a full public image coordinator. Okay, and this is um, with the, the zone, correct? Yeah, so this is with zone 26. We have 13 districts in zone 26. And so my general uh, function is to create tools and strategies to help districts and clubs uh, to, to, to help them communicate the brand of Rotary in a more consistent and concise manner. Sounds good. Tell us a little bit about the challenge. How, how do you go about trying to create a plan for this? Because it's one of those mysteries forever. Oh yeah, for sure. So in our two zones, 25 and 26, we have 1,300 clubs. Well, 1,280 some clubs. And so it's a very large geographic area. So we really have to be strategic in who we talk to and what we tell them. And we wanna make sure that we can create tools that educate district governors, as well as tools that they can use to educate their presidents. So that's really, that, that's the number one thing. And then probably the secondary thing is to create media opportunities, such as what we're doing today, in order to reach out to as many individual Rotarians as we can also. Okay, got it. Now how about the public? Since it's a public image, how much of the time is spent actually studying what the public wants or sees? Quite, quite a bit of the time is. So some of those tools that we give to district governors that help clubs really come down to how we uh, penetrate the media landscape within certain areas. Um, and we really focus that down into club sizes and, and understanding, okay, well, if a club is a certain size, they're probably gonna be into, in a certain size uh, uh, community. And when they're in that size of community, these are the 10 things that they need to do. So we really want to focus down so that we can help that club tell the public about how they benefit their community. Got it, so in other words, you would actually have to tailor it and take a look at it, size of community, size of club, all of the above, whereas oh. a small small community would be completely different from Chicago, for example, oh, for or sure. Los Angeles. Yeah, and what we do is we create playbook that is a uh, essentially a media um, penetration playbook that so, that walks a club through these are the ten these are the ten areas that you have to do that, that you have to focus on, and if you're 
If your area is like this, then do these things. If your area is like this, do these things. Okay. But really it comes down to doing the hard work for the media and allowing them to use your hard work, right? So if you create your own article, you create your own great photography, and you forward that to, media, to, the, to the media representative and say, this is a great idea, and, this is the, and, and these are the people we benefit with our club, then in most cases, you, you'll get success. Hmm. You'll achieve success. Now, how much latitude uh, or input do you have as a public image coordinator having to fit within a, a Rotary's role or model? Do they have mandates that you work within, or do they give you latitude? Yeah, we have significant KPIs, uh, key performance indicators from a goal standpoint from year over to year. Um, this last year, we really focused on brand adoption, of our, the adoption of our new brand. So we did a, a lot of programs around adopting our new brand. This next year is going to be much more focused on media placement and then really tying up the loose ends when it comes to brand adoption. So we are fairly well directed. Uh, we go through, um, I would say, a little over a week training every year, some in March and some in April, getting ready for it now. Um, and we, we create a str strategic plan on how we can connect with all of the district governors. Because that's really, yeah. if, if we lose a district governor and they don't hear from us, that's, that's not good. That's yeah. true. Now, the KPIs, Key Performance Indicators, how is yours measured? Now, I know, for example, if there's membership, you got numbers. You right. can do the numbers. As right. a public image, though. It's very difficult. <laughs> so I'll I tell you a little so. bit about it. This year, what we did is we sent out a survey to every club president in our two zones. And we asked them three questions. We asked them if they'd updated their, their, the look and feel of their website and their Facebook page. And we asked them if they updated the look and feel of their brochure and newsletter. Okay? We got those responses back. We got about 50% response, response rate from all the presidents. Of those 50%, about 60% of them said yes. And so to really validate that, we go to the next level of saying, okay, well, we're going to take 10% random sampling of all the clubs, and we're going to actually go look. And we're going to ensure that, you know, we're going to ensure that that 60% is, is close to accurate. Then we can have a pretty good gauge whether that survey was correct or not. So how difficult is it to get at the club level with the product that you have? Because there's so many clubs out there, and also, the ask probably has to come from the club rather than from you going to the club. From, from, the, from the, dis, the district, yeah. I tip, it's very political <laughs> for sure, yes. That's why I asked. Yes. Like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's great because what it, what it really makes us do is it makes us have our ducks in a row. It makes us make sure that all the, the T's are crossed and I's are dotted so that each district governor, when we ask permission, to send an email to their presidents, that, that the program looks solid to them. We want to make sure that they understand and have confidence in the program that we're putting in place in front of their presidents. We do all that before it goes out to the president. So I had permission, we got permission from each individual district governor before we actually went out to all the presidents. Got it, understood. Yeah. That's a great idea. Now you brought with you a, a sample, one of, mm -hmm. one of the videos that was developed um, probably by you along with the rest of the team. Yeah. So if we have a chance, I, I'd sure like to see that. Um. Everything changes. It's the way of the world. People change, companies change, and nonprofits change. In the world today, there are literally hundreds and thousands of non-governmental organizations address a wide variety of issues. And so for the consumer, they're faced with this plethora of organizations. And so in today's world, it's incredibly important to make sure that your brand is crisp and clear and coherent. If something isn't consistent, then it's confusing. So if somebody hands you a business card, for example, that's got a different logo, different colors, maybe even a different name, and, and they go up to the website and go, well, wait a minute, is this the same club? My name is Haley Berlant. I was with Siegel and Gale and I uh, worked specifically with Rotary International from 2011 through 2013, spearheading the initiative to strengthen the public image of Rotary. And that's what this project was designed to do, to clarify, to crispen our image, to differentiate us in this world of a wide variety of organizations.
I just come off uh, rebranding the YMCA nationally, and during my conversations with David and other representatives from Rotary, um, they felt as though we were the right partners to deal with a very complex infrastructure as well as helping a legacy organization re-energize and revitalize itself while respecting all it had achieved over 100 plus years. In about 2008, the YMCA did a whole review of our brand and our image and they looked at all of our materials and they really did an amazing presentation about our image across the country and made some recommendations to change that. And almost all the YMCAs in the country seemed to really be on board and actually excited and, and energized about the change. Salvation Army's main logo, that red shield that everybody is so used to seeing, has been a staple of the organization since World War I. In 2005, we did implement a new brand strategy, uh, implementing the tagline, uh, doing the most good. We did see success right off the bat. Consistently, we see upticks in terms of brand recall, as well as you know what, what kind of values come to mind when you think of the name Salvation Army, as well as program awareness. So we're getting beyond the stereotype of the Salvation Army. Historically, many of our publications and the lens through which our communications was formulated focused on the how. How do you become a member? How do you give money to our foundation? And what this exercise has done for us is made us realize that we need to start focusing on the why. Why do you want to become a Rotarian? Why would you want to join this great organization? Why would you want to give money to the Rotary Foundation? I think Siegel and Gale was very helpful in helping us rethink that and provide for us a new lens through which we will filter our future uh, communications. When you go through a rebrand or you kind of change your visual identity, I think it's an opportunity to recapture their attention and maybe change what they understand about the organization. So all of these images of young, very diverse people in Rotary interacting, whether it be, again, a service project or even just a fellowship event, maybe Rotary is more than I thought it was. I'm concerned about membership, and we can use the new voice and the new logo to our advantage if everyone would use it. There's a reason why they chose the logo that they did. It pops at you. You know what it says. You know what it is. And we need to all get on board and make that change happen so that we have that consistent look worldwide uh, that says, this is Rotary. We know in our community in Little Ashland, Oregon, where so many of us are involved in Rotary, and still when you talk to people on the street, they're like, Rotary is about that you know, lunch club for men or, you know, and so there's so much room to move, move on and, and get better at telling our story. I think, you know, once we change the logo and you put it on your website, that's great. But the job really isn't done. There's so much more when we start talking about the voice. How are you going to incorporate that in your club's social media, in whatever platform you might use? If you were to ask me what brand is, it really is a guide or a lens for the way you think, the way you act, and the way you communicate, brought to life at every single point of interaction with your audiences, both internal and external. Leadership and staff truly understood that change is difficult. They are asking autonomous clubs to change. They're changing in an area of technology that many don't have. They're being maybe told to change that's not always comfortable with clubs and there's a financial component as well. So with that understanding, staff has gone to great lengths to provide free tools on the rotary.org website. There you can find the opportunity to use templates for club logos, there's templates for brochures, newsletters, logos for Interact, logos for the new Rotaract. It's all there on the website. Take a look. But we're also fortunate that in zones 25 and 26, we have a website that has a shortcut to many of those uh, areas where we need help. And you'll find website templates available there. WordPress, DACDB, Club Runner. You'll find all sorts of important information about the social media boom and how you can incorporate social media into your website, into your club. 
You can even navigate the Seagull Gale Report. So take advantage of it at zone2526.org and see what you find. As Rotarians, we're unable to talk about our own organization. The new voice helps us. The new voice brings clarity, simplicity, get the conversation started, make that non-Rotarian, make another Rotarian feel comfortable with this organization, bring them in, make it inviting. The new voice will help us all. I think it goes back to telling our story. We have a lot to be proud of. We accomplish a lot in communities around the world. And when we tell that story, that pride in what we do, it's an enthusiasm, it's an excitement. We did this, we built that park, or we helped those kids. And that's the kind of excitement that Rotary needs to keep bringing more people into our big family. Yeah, it was very good there, Michael. How involved were you with the actual production of that? Well, um, scripting, we did, a, we did a lot of scripting. Tim Buley and I did most of the scripting on it. Um, and then we hired a company to do the editing for us. Um, we originally created it to be a piece for governors at the Institute. And that's originally what, what the idea was. And, and uh, we left our planning session last year to really, really thinking about how can we take video that is widely dispersible and create meaningful content with that video. So now we've created three, three, three different ones of those. A long, the long one that you just saw, a two and a half minute one, and a one minute one. And so those two and a half minute ones and the one minute one has been has been shown in clubs all over our, our zones. So okay, yeah. good. good. Um, what would you say is the specific message? One, one point that you bring out in all three videos is the one that you want to convey the most would yeah. be of that. Would be the benefit of why we rebranded. Okay. 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 And the benefit really is, is to bring our clubs together. Okay. We, um, as a Rotarian, we're members of individual clubs and we see uniqueness in those individual clubs. And we always have to remember that we are all Rotarians and we're, we are all Rotary. And really what we're doing with this new brand message is making sure that we all understand that we are all Rotary and the public understands that we are all Rotary. So it's really about that benefit of clear and concise messages back to the public. Good, good. Now do you want to share any back information on this video, something of interest that Oh yeah, other I, people don't know about <laughs> this video. Um, Tim and his team in Zone Twenty Five put a lot of work into understanding and selecting the individuals. I, I sat for a number of sessions for the video. I didn't make the cut, <laughs> um, but um, you made the cut here, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, no, but we had a great time with really selecting a cross-section of our of the Rotarians not only focusing on dis, like past district governors or not only focusing in one specific area but re, geographic area but really focusing on uh, a message that we can take to our whole zone so that they would all identify with. Okay and what do you think the success has been with these with these videos? Have you seen results? Um, changes? Well, I, think, I think that results are really We've gotten a lot of great feedback for, at the Institute. We got a lot of great feedback at uh, the pets. We, at, um, at all the pets have seen one version or another yeah. uh, of it. And so a lot of the presidents have seen it. So we've gotten really good feedback. Now, the way that we'll see results really come down to in June when we sent out our last survey. Our, our key performance indicator this year was to have 66% of the clubs in our zone be representing the new brand. Okay. Okay, and um, we did the preliminary uh, survey here just a month ago or so, and we have about sixty percent right now. So if we reach or or exceed our goal, really is what will show us whether it's successful or not. Okay, so it actually uh, has to do with with the branding specific, then that's your key performance indicators. Yeah. How um, do you see this then functioning if it's a public image, actually being viewed by the public? Is there a way that you could measure that? In other words, the people that aren't in Rotary, we are focusing right now mm -hmm. on Rotarians, but mm -hmm. what happens with those people outside of Rotary, the public in general? Yeah, and so what we try to do is we try to 
teach clubs and other public image um, chairs, district chairs and stuff like that, the understanding of how we can measure um, brand impressions. Okay, so that's really, brand impressions um, is really how you, how you measure what the public, what, how, how the public is seeing or how much they're seeing you. So that's really what comes down to this next year when we go into the phase of really media placement. And our KPIs will really be starting to understand how many media placements, how many brand impressions we're getting in each market that we're in. So it comes back to how a large company would normally measure it also. Right. So we're taking the same types of, sure. of tools that large companies use to be able to measure those brand impressions and also to measure some reputation right, and some understanding of what the public actually thinks of us, not just them seeing our brand. Right, right. Uh, mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, mm -hmm. Outstanding. What do you think about, uh, or what does Rotary think about now that there is one consistent branding that's, that's going to occur straight across the board? Because uh, there's been changes, I mean, changes oh, sure. occurring over the last few years. Yeah, and, we're, and, and, and this is going to be an ongoing process. I believe that this year in the future, you're going to see, and presidents will see, uh, a Rotary brand playbook to help them navigate the next three years and be able to score themselves where they are in the process as, as, as their club and then be able to understand, well, what do I need to do in the coming couple of years? And that's really important because we don't want to force our clubs to, to, um, to adopt the brand, but we want to show them the benefit of doing so. So giving them a plan is very important for them to be able to follow, or their board to be able to follow from president to president. Okay. Now how would the uh, branding or public image then relate, um, you got the brand, to the actual, what they do, their, their fit in the community? Okay. So the, the public image has much to do with the brand experience, right? So the image guidelines really uh, define what our brand experience should be. And if you, go, if you read through the 70 pages of, of, of brand guideline, you'll, you'll see that. But what it really comes down to is a, a vibrant, being a vibrant club is very important. Right. So being a vibrant club, and we've probably all heard that, of being very welcoming to guests, being very open to other uh, minority uh, groups or organizations, being open to the public, and being, um, and being fun, making sure that um, we're taking care of our community's needs, but really Making it so when somebody experiences Rotary, they experience this new, uplifting, clear, clearly helpful organization. So that, that is all part of the brand. Okay. Okay. When somebody walks into Rotary for the very first time, that's their only brand experience with Rotary. Hmm. We need to make sure that's good. Very good. Addressing the same thing, uh, an example. The rotary pin. So many Rotarians don't wear the rotary pin. Uh, is, is there a way that public image actually sees a direction on how to get that to occur, where that pride actually comes with that pin? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good, really good <laughs> it's question. A, it's a tough one, I it's know. Really, it's, and it's tough because um, many times the Rotarians who, who are Rotarians in their heart, it's not about the pin anymore, yeah, right? Yeah. So once they, when they're, they're just a new Rotarian, they're, they're proud of their pin. They're in the club now, right? Yeah, yeah. But the Rotarians that are Rotarians in their heart are really, it's, the pin isn't as important, as important anymore. From a, from a public image standpoint, though, the pin is very important. Yeah, yeah. And it's very important because it's the first sign that people who aren't Rotarians see um, and they, and it sets you apart from the person next to you. True. So um, I think in the coming years, that, that the pin and flags and city monuments are, 
are something that we address kind of in the third year of a brand okay. playbook. Okay. But it definitely is something that is coming in some, and some strategies around how we can uh, how we can increase the use of all of our pins uh, and all of our emblems, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen the growth that's occurring in Asia. Mm -hmm. And in those Asian countries, Rotary carries a very high prestige uh, level. In other words, if you're a Rotarian, you earned it, not only because of your stature within a community, but because of what you've accomplished financially. Yes. Um, that prestige has that been addressed or will it be addressed as part of the uh, public image and branding? I know it's difficult because it's a cultural thing. Yeah, it is difficult because it's really, in the Asian countries, is, is very much, um, it's, it's very much regulated in that area. Yeah. I mean, if you go other places in the world, you don't really see that same, that same mentality. I think that, I mean, a, a, in Chicago, when we were there about a month ago, I got to meet a number of those gentlemen and those ladies that came over from there. And um, it, it definitely, we learn a lot from how they, how they present Rotary to new, peop, to new members. Because mm -hmm. they present Rotary to new members much different than we That's do. That's true. Yeah. And, and I believe it shouldn't be, can you, come to, can you just come to lunch with me, right? It needs to be presented in a much more formal, much more um, precise manner. And uh, I think the, in the future you're gonna see a lot more, this is how we should do it, rather than, oh, just go ask somebody. Good, good. Okay. Well, Michael, thank you very much for sharing that. I mean, the insight's always interesting, fascinating, just because Rotarians, as Rotarians, most people don't think about that as being one of our goals, visions, and way to accomplish things. Um, for sharing the information. I thank you very much for that and uh, look forward to seeing some of the future work, those things that you're doing and forwardly what Rotary is going to be doing. Great. So with that, thank you very much for joining us. I sure appreciate it. Thank you for yeah. having me. My pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. With that, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, hopefully at the next show, we'll start seeing some of the new branding occurring. Uh, keep an eye on what Michael's doing because those are outstanding things. With that, thank you very much for your time. We will see you next time. <laughs>